Hi, this is Brad with Copper Creek Cuts, a lawn care company in Northeast Florida, here to tell you about this headache rack, which truly lived up to its name. There's a lot of people who do not enjoy when I talk about clients I turned down or jobs that I didn't take or problems I've had with products. I think a lot of people feel like it's whining or I should just get over things. But what you've got to remember is the whole point of this channel, what it's been from April 2017 when I started it, is to entertain and educate. So when I go through a situation and everything seems to go wrong, and I think that information could either entertain you or educate you, if you have to go through the same thing, I'm gonna talk about it. Whether that's a client whose property is so filthy I'm not gonna to touch it, or why I don't do jobs with trampolines or whatever. I wanted to do that to explain why I'm making this video. And the second thing is I'm not trying to bash the company that made this or the individuals that I worked with. But getting this headache rack from the start to the finish was indeed a headache. I won't make that joke too many more times. A around the beginning of May of 2021, I started researching headache racks. And if you don't know, the idea behind this is that this keeps things in your truck bed from flying forward into your cab. They prevent a headache, something hitting you in the head. Now, I don't necessarily need that utility of it because I don't carry a lot of stuff in my bed. So you may say, Brad, why do you even need a headache rack? Well, for one reason, it's great marketing. I don't have stickers on my truck. I'm not gonna put stickers on my truck, but this, man, this just looks good. I also like the look of it. So this is a kind of a big old country boy truck in my opinion. I live in the good old country. And so this is something that speaks to me. The other thing that does have some functionality, let's say I'm bringing my Hasagawa 12 foot ladder, instead of having to leave the tailgate down because it's so tall, I can now just rest that ladder on the top of this and I've got these lumber stops that'll actually serve as a tie down point. So I can carry things that are longer than my bed is without them hanging over the bed. By and large, the biggest reason I got this was for this customization. And the company that I went with is the only one, the only one I found online that does this. I'm not saying they are the only one. I'm saying they're the only ones I could find online. There are lots of companies that will do custom headache racks, but what you'll see is that what that means is you can pick from a honeycomb pattern or a diamond plate pattern or a square cut pattern. You can add lumber stops. You can add LED light. That's what custom is to them. But when I say this was the only company that did truly custom, I mean they are the only ones I saw who would put whatever you wanted, whatever kind of logo you wanted on your headache rack. They would integrate it. Here's the other thing. At the end of all this, I'm happy I got it. I'm very satisfied with the, the end result of the project product. My only issue was with the process of getting the product. If I had to do it all over again, I would with the same company. So I found the company that I wanted to work with and on May the 18th, after I submitted a request for a custom headache rack that included pictures of my company logo, we did a couple back and forth uh, emails about what I was looking for. I received an invoice for $1,627. Now, 1,077 of that is the base headache rack which at this point did not include these lumber stops with no customization. That also included these rails that will let you put a, a truck bed toolbox on. You've got to get a special kit for that. In addition, there was $300 for three units of design material CNC cutting, $200 for two units of additional fab and assembly, and $50 for one unit of powder coat color changes. That came up to $1627. They required a $200 deposit to cover the CNC designer's time because they've got to punch this into a computer to figure out how to make the machine do it. And that $200 deposit gets backed out on the, uh, on the final price. One of the changes that we made, this is what my logo normally looks like. We decided to switch it to a simple four color logo. So we aren't doing the transition of two colors here. That saved some money there. I go ahead and pay the deposit. On May 25th, I get this render. I asked if we can add the lumber stops. These cost $54 and if we can make the logo bigger. So they go ahead and do that. This is the new render that I got on May the 27th. Uh, that same day they added the $54 for the lumber stops onto the final invoice. So in my head I'm thinking, okay, uh, it was about $1,600. They're adding $50 for the lumber stops, but I paid 
already 200 so you know 1400 something dollars instead i opened an invoice for 1731 dollars what and this was my first what in the world is going on moment so when i compare the two the extra charges are $54 for these lumber stops, which that's fine. That's, that's something extra I wanted to pay. There's also a $100 charge with one extra unit of additional fab and assembly. That went from two to three. And then $150 in three extra units of powder coat and color changes. That went from one to four. So I send an email. I'm like, what's going on here? Uh, did adding the lumber stops jack the price up that much? Because if so, let's just get rid of them. What we found out was that the extra $100 in fabrication cost, that was a mistake. The guy just said, sorry, I didn't catch that. I must have clicked up by accident. Um, honest, let's just say it was an honest mistake. The next issue, each color they have to change and clean out the gun. So it was a $50 charge for each color. The issue was the invoice I was presented with uh, at the very beginning only had one. And I, like, I don't know this process. I know we're using four colors, but I don't know that that means that the invoice should have had four colors. That's not my job to know. This is one of those things that now I know that I'm telling you so you know to look out for. But at the time, I didn't know what I didn't know, and I didn't know that. So I asked, well, I mean, uh, was I supposed to do the math on that and know that from the beginning? Because the, the original invoice only had 50 bucks for that, and it only lists one. Um, individual said, yeah, sorry about that. It, it should have been four. That was my mistake. And that was pretty much it. It was kind of just shrugged off. Um, and that, that didn't leave me with a great feeling. And I think part of it is because, at least for me in my business, if I ever mess up on an, an invoice or an estimate, I have never and I will never go back to the customer and say, listen, uh, I made a mistake and I need more money from you. That's just not the way that I do business. So, and, you know, I have no idea how this business translates as far as uh, margins and costs of equipment. You know, if they didn't end up charging me that, maybe they wouldn't have made any money on this at all. I don't know. I, I find it unlikely. But all I'm saying is I don't know. It may be easier for me to write off 150 bucks as a landscaper on mulch than it is for these guys on powder coating and, you know, metal fabrication. I just don't know. That being said, whatever my business is, whether it is headache racks or uh, landscaping, I'm not going to make the customer pay for something I messed up on. So that really uh, ruffled my feathers when I was going to have to come up with another $150 because that invoice was wrong to begin with. Here's the other issue. I've already put down a $200 deposit. <laughs> so it's like walk away from it over $150 and lose $200 or just go ahead and cough up the extra $150. So I was kind of stuck. Now, to play devil's advocate, that $200, I did not ever verify that it was non-refundable. I'm assuming it is. Um, and even if it is non-refundable, maybe in that instance, they would have made an exception, said, hey, you know what? We messed up on this invoice. You know, it's 150 more than you thought, so we're not going to... I never asked them that. So, you know, they might have still done right by me if I said, you know what? Just forget the whole thing. I want my deposit back. I didn't say that, so I don't know how that would have went. That same day, a new invoice for $1631 comes, and keep in mind that's after a $200 deposit on a $1627 invoice. Uh, but I go ahead and pay it, and we talk about the colors. And here's, here's the other issue, uh, the thing that I didn't know that I'm telling you. They snapped a picture of a color palette that they had in stock. They emailed that picture to me and then I displayed that image on my monitors and they said let's go ahead and talk about the colors. To be fair that might have been the beginning of a discussion. Um, what I took it as was I needed to pick the colors and so I went ahead and picked them. What I should have said was look you're seeing something in real life that you're taking a picture of and emailing me and I'm seeing on a monitor I have no idea what these colors look like in real life. I need you to tell me what you've got my logo. I sent you my logo. So you tell me what colors need to match. That's how we should have started things off. When I got to this color, because they're in stock greens, they didn't have a ton that matched my color scheme. So I kind of had to be like, all right, well, uh, this one for that, this one for that. But for the creek, which should be a little bit of a yellower green, they didn't have anything. So what I saw was this uh, mintier green. The other mistake that I made is when I Googled this color, there were multiple shades of that color. And what I saw 
was a darker one and I said well hopefully it's the darker shade and I don't think it was so that was a mistake on my end but so those were two things I should have done differently because when I got the uh, render of this about eight weeks later they said about six to eight weeks to make the whole thing and uh, I think about eight and a half weeks later I checked in and they sent me this image and uh, this creek was much much brighter mintier green in the picture than I was anticipating and I was not happy about it so I said wait do not send it out to me uh, that that color is way way off how much is it going to cost to fix it and so this is another thing where I was kind of trying to see what they would do from a taking care of the customer side. What they said was, well, what we can do is go ahead and drill out these rivets and we'll just cut out a new creek and we'll do a new color. We think this color will match better. And then they sent me an invoice for that and it would have been $200 to do that change. And so now at this point, you know, this is the third or fourth issue I wasn't expecting. And um, I said, no, just forget it. There's no way I'm spending another $200 on this. Let's just go ahead and, and send it over. So you may say, well, Brad, why don't you just spend, you know, you're already $1,800 in at this point. Why not just spend another $200? If it was going to spend $200 to get this color exactly right, I would have done it at a heartbeat. It was only going to get a little bit closer, but it still wasn't going to be the right color. The other thing is that entire argument of if you've already spent $1,800, why not spend $200 more? If you haven't done any studies on the economic side of like sunk costs, that's the actual term, sunk cost, Basically a sunk cost is something you've already spent and you're not getting it back. It should not be a factor in uh, your decision to spend further money. Like that's how gamblers get in trouble, right? Well, I've already lost $3,000 gambling, so I've got to play the next hand so I can wager 200 and try and win it all back, right? Those are sunk costs. You're never going to get them back. The money that I would have spent on this, it, it was sunk, so I'm not going to spend another 200 to try and get the color better. So I said, just go ahead and ship it the way it is. It ended up, when everything was said and done, the color's fine. I think it looks okay. It's still not the right green, but I think it looks fine. And uh, I learned some valuable lessons. But that is the story of how this almost $2,000 headache rack really was quite a headache. If you've got any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments and I'll try and answer them. Here's a few more videos that you might like. But as always, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.